Now, if you get a kick out of this sort of drama, the U.S. government gets another chance to trip up the struggling economy in less than a month. That's when the current continuing resolution, the thing that passes for a federal budget in America, expires. For what it's worth to you, both President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner say they are really, really going to try to avoid that. I did lay out that the House is going to move a continuing resolution next week uh, to fund the government past uh, March 27th. Uh, and I'm hopeful uh, that we won't have to deal uh, with the threat of a government shutdown uh, while uh, we're dealing with uh, the sequester at the same time. Uh, the House will act next week, and I hope the Senate uh, will follow suit. 13% uh, cuts, roughly, across the Defense Department. There are some people who say that is a silver lining, particularly some Democrats who say we would never have been able to negotiate those kind of cuts. What's your take on, on the defense cuts? They may see it as a silver lining, but it's a really black cloud that's hanging over the Defense Department. Uh, I think you can make rational, responsible cuts. I think they have to be made. They will be made if Congress can find a way to uh, sit down and resolve it uh, uh, responsibly. But right now, the way the uh, across-the-board cuts, what you'll do, you've exempted, the president's exempted uh, our, our uh, military uh, in terms of our fighting forces. <coughs> right. So personnel have been exempted. That means the entire cut of some 45, 44, 45 billion dollars in the next six months come out of what we call O&M, operation and maintenance. That means slowdown in repairs. You won't be sending ships back out uh, quickly. You won't be able to repair aircraft. You'll have no uh, a real reduction in depot maintenance. And you'll also have a reduction in procurement. So that will have a major impact on our readiness. So that's not a responsible way uh, to, uh, to legislate to say, take 13% uh, across the board. It really doesn't match up resources with our responsibilities because the president has articulated a, a, a structure and a policy mm -hmm. for shifting resources to the Gulf and to the Asia Pacific region. Now the question is, all of these other countries are looking at us saying, you know, it's great philosophy, great strategy. Where's the money? Where's the money? David Gergen, uh, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of people agree with the secretary that uh, this across the board, less than precise way of doing it doesn't work. What's interesting is that Republicans have suggested legislation that would allow the president to decide how to apply cuts to different agencies. And it seems to be a power that the president <coughs> isn't interested in. Why would Republicans be offering that to the president? And why wouldn't the president want the authority to direct those hmm. cuts? It's one of the great mysteries, because if there's anything that everyone in Washington does agree on today, uh, that this is a stupid way to cut a budget. It's a dangerous way to cut a budget, especially in the defense area. I think it was a Pentagon controller who, who estimated that within a year, uh, two-thirds of Army combat units would be at inadequate, uh, unacceptable levels of readiness. Within a year, two-thirds. So there, that's the kind of thing that comes from this mindless way of doing it across the board. Every governor of the country who's been having to cut has done it with sort of a sense so what's important, what's not essential, let's cut the non-essentials. So why doesn't the president accept it? Uh, why are the Republicans pushing it? Well, obviously the Republicans are worried that, uh, that they, there will be screens. By doing it across the board way, uh, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to scream. Uh, there are going to things that are going to happen, like, you know, if we have long lines in airports, that's going to bring enormous pressure on the Republicans uh, to, uh, to, to, to give, give up and, and give the president the tax increases he wants. On the other hand, from the president's point of view, if you if you accept this more the smarter way of doing this, uh, he may then lose some of this leverage. So I think it's irresponsible, frankly. I, I think the president has been right to try to find a better way to do this, but wrong in refusing to accept this more flexible way of cutting.